Now with Unreal 5.4 we have motion matching as a feature now and it is actually quite awesome because it more or less eliminates complexity in your state machines and in some cases uh, replaces them altogether or even can replace things like your blend spaces and stuff like that entirely based on the actual animation data itself rather than having to set up a bunch of programming around it it's so so nice so let's get into setting it up I have an example here already set up for you. Uh, this is a Miximo character, and the reason I went with a Miximo character is to show you something very, very important. And that is, if we go here, uh, we have a root bone that is not part of the actual like animation rig bones. It's just a, a bone that everything else in the end inherits back to. That's very important because motion matching is based on the root motion. And usually in Miximo, maybe in your own skeletons as well, if you haven't thought this through very well. Uh, the root bone is actually uh, the hip bone itself. So if you're using mixing animations, which I am assuming quite a few of you are, Unreal is going to be releasing a library of like 200 or 500 uh, humanoid animations sometime in, I think, July or August is the plan for now. So maybe by that time, you won't be using Miximo as much anymore. But for the time being, if you are, you're going to be running into that problem. So we're going to walk through that first. And the way we're going to fix that is with Miximo Converter. It's a free little tool. Uh, you can find it on Google fairly easily. I'm going to try to remember to link it down below in the description. If it is not in the description, yell at me in the comments and I will add it. Uh, but if we open this up, what we can do here is we can say, hey, I want to uh, start converting. And there it will give you a folder in which to place all of your Miximo animations that you downloaded from the website. This can be a auto-rigged character that you've made and let Miximo auto-rig, or in my case, just a character that I downloaded over the website. This is in the folder incoming FBX. Uh, then you simply just say, hey, I want to convert these animations and once you've converted those animations, uh, they will be here in the outgoing FBX, which again, you can just open with this folder. And you can see we now have all of the animations .ue.fbx. So now they're all Unreal ready. These are the animations that you're going to be importing. So first you import your character. I can just do this in a separate directory real quick to show you. Uh, so let's just do that on like this directory because I don't really care. So first off, we drag in the actual character for which we're going to uh, import the skeletal mesh and the mesh. All that stuff, you're probably used to doing that once you've got that imported. You might get a uh, error or a warning rather like this. It works, don't pay attention to it. Is <laughs> really all I have to say about that. So it'll import all of your uh, skeletal assets. And then what you can do is you can select all of your animations and simply say, hey, they belong to this skeleton. If you get prompted to also import the mesh with any of these animations, uh, uncheck that. You want to not import the mesh, only import the animations and link them to the skeleton of the character that you just imported. So we're gonna import those all. And now we have all of them. This is where the actual motion matching uh, process starts. So we're going to take uh, all of the locomotion animations which in this case uh, includes idle, uh, left strafe, uh, left strafe walking, uh, not the turning ones, the right strafe, uh, right strafe walk, uh, the running, uh, the sprinting backwards, and the walking and walking back. Selecting all of those, we want to go into asset actions and edit selection in property matrix. This will just give you a way to edit certain things about all of the files at once. And the things that we're going to want to edit is going to be the root motion. So we want to enable the root motion because motion matching kind of what it does is it looks at the root motion of your character. I think it also uses like specifically the feet, which you can tell which bones are the feet, uh, but it primarily I believe uses the root motion uh, to calculate what trajectory this animation belongs to, and then it uses the trajectory of your character, we'll get to that in a moment, looks at what combination of animations that it has in a database, how it can blend those to end up 
with a good blend of animations for the movement of the character in that moment. Uh, we also want to have force root lock on. And of course, since these are all locomotion animations, we also want them to be looping. Now, with all that, I'm going to save everything in the project so that we have everything properly set up. Next up, we need to enable the motion matching related plugins. So if we uh, come up into the plugins here, uh, we can look for motion trajectory which we want to enable. It is labeled as experimental, so do be aware of that. Uh, but for the most part, it's fine. And then we also want to um, enable the post searching plugin. Once you have both of those enabled, restart your engine if you haven't already, and then you will be able to add in the stuff that you need. So that'll be in animation. Now you see here motion matching. And the first thing we want to add is a post searching schema for which you will need to select uh, what skeleton you are going to be setting this up for. So in our case, it will be, I don't even know which one this is. I think this is the one that we just added. So we're going to be doing it with that one. And uh, we'll call this for now character motion schema or something like that. Doesn't really matter what we call it. Opening that up, we get a bunch of options, which uh, we're just going to mostly ignore. You can dive deeper into this and uh, figure out what all of these options do and how they all work. If you just have simple animations for a simple normal humanoid character, uh, you can kind of just ignore this. <laughs> Once you have that though, we're going to come back here into animation motion matching and we're going to uh, make a post search database. And there you have to supply a post search schema. So the thing we just made is going to say, hey, I belong to this skeleton. These are the settings. And that's what I'm going to use to interpret that skeleton. Again, for the most part, you can just kind of keep it at default. And let's call this post database and we can open that up. And this is where we'll put all of the animations that we want to be blending between. So all the animations that we just uh, enabled a root motion for, we're going to have to select them all again. So let's go through this idle left strafe and walking, right strafe and walking, running, sprinting. I think that's all of them. We can just kind of drag and drop them into there. And now if we select any one of them, and now if you select any one of them, uh, they will play the animation and you will see that blue line there indicating the motion path that this animation takes. So idle is just nothing. Left strafe is quite quickly moving in that direction, uh, but left strafe walking is a little bit more slowly walking in that direction and so on and so forth. So the more animations you can add to this, the better it is. For instance, right now we don't have like starting and stopping animations, but if you added those, it would be a lot more smooth when you start and stop running. Right now it has to interpolate between the walking animation or the running animation and the idle animation. If you have an animation specifically for that, you can just throw it in here and it will just magically improve the feeling of your character. It really is that easy. Now, with all that, last thing to make in animation motion matching is the post search normalization set, which we'll just call uh, the normal set or something like that. Call it whatever you want. In there, uh, we simply just have an array of databases and we just add in uh, the new database that we just made. If you have multiple databases for uh, whatever reason that are all relevant, uh, for instance, if you have a separate database for your crouching and a separate database for your non-crouching state, uh, you can blend those in your animation blueprint however you want. Uh, you can both add them in here in theory. Maybe you also have one for crawling or something like that. Speaking of animation blueprints, We've gone through all the setup, so now we can do the exciting bit, and that is making the animation blueprint. So, so easiest way to do that is just right-click on the skeleton, create uh, animation blueprint, and we'll call this um, motion matching. And now that we're in here, uh, this is going to be ridiculously easy, right? So just hold your horses. What we're going to do is we're going to add in a motion matching node, and there we need to uh, give in a database, so that'll be our post database that we just made. Uh, but it also will need another node. It's, it's really complex, it needs two nodes. Uh, the second node that it needs is a pose history. Uh, because with a pose history, it can see what poses it just had, so that it can blend into the next pose. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's kind of all there is to it. And that's going to go into our output pose, and that's kind of it. Uh, but we need a trajectory input for this one. Uh, because otherwise it's always just going to uh, play the idle animation. 
And the way we do that is with the new trajectory components, uh, which if we go into our blueprints here real quick, into just third person character, you can see I have this component right here. And you can just simply add that with just simply character trajectory. I've said this so many times in this video, my mind is just refusing to accept this as a word at this point. Uh, but now that we have this component, this will just keep kind of the direction of our movement and we can use that in our animation blueprint map. So in our event graph, we're going to, uh, with try get pawn owner, cast to our BP third person character. Again, this is just normal animation blueprint setup. Technically speaking, I suppose you could do this only once and then save it out as a variable, but it doesn't really matter. We get the trajectory component and just simply upgrade that to a variable. So now we have that available there as a variable. And with that in the animation graph, we can right click this trajectory and we can bind that to the trajectory on the character trajectory component. I'm telling you, the word trajectory has lost all meaning. Uh, but with that set up, now it's going to uh, use our character's movement to blend between all of those animations that we just kind of put into a list. And the engine is going to take care of the rest for us. Of course, we need to set the mesh to the actual mesh. Um, I have this mesh in the project twice now because I re-imported everything to show you guys how to do it. Uh, but let's change it to the other one. Uh, just for shits and giggles and i think i called this something like motion match there we go and now if we play we can see that even though we didn't really set up any state machine or whatever uh it is pretty seamlessly matching uh our movement in whatever direction we're going with the animation uh if you don't get these strafe animations by the way uh that is because your character itself is using control rotation or, or not using the control rotation rather so if we set this to false uh, the character will just automatically turn into whatever direction you are walking toward which makes it impossible to strafe it's kind of up to you what your game wants and needs of course but for the purposes of showing the blending between different directions i uh, enabled that so that we can actually strafe left and right and show you that like we even have these like little middle grounds and, and whatever. So you really want to add as many animations as possible here. Just like you would in a normal traditional blend space, right? Just having the two, three different directional animations is a good base. But the more animations you add, the better it's going to do. The difference being is now you just add them and unreal takes care of the rest for you you don't have to find like the perfect position for them to be as long as the animation you made is actually like physically accurate and the amount of space that your character moves in the animation with the root motion matches what you would expect and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 